Welcome back, everyone. So nice to see you again. Today, we're going to be reading the second story from the Foundation is Broke storyline. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. The New Secretary in Town by Ekranak The flight back to the United States was quiet and uneventful. Really, Ekra was just happy to have gotten it over with, but, of course, as all new department heads must, he had to do math even when he was seven hours into a return flight over the Atlantic, and compared to the rush of the sales pitch and the gambles he made just a few hours earlier, the routine of accounting seemed to be much less appealing. Okay, Fern said across from him. A calculator was held in her hand, and a large pile of papers was already gathering at the top of their private plane's table. So, how many tons? Ekro had a calculator in his hand, too, and... His own growing pile of papers, full of various statistics and numbers. He answered. Uh, 50 tons for 700 million each. Fern let out another billow of awe. Still can't freaking believe that you actually pulled that off, she coughed. All right, so that equals to... Ekro pushed a few buttons on his calculator as well. The same went for Fern. 35, 35 billion. billion, they both said in unison. Ekro's eyes widened. Fern's eyes did, too. Jesus Christ! Ekro sat back, his mouth agape. That's... 77% of the fucking yearly budget. On one shipment, Fern said, a smile on her face. It's not enough to rebuild 19. We're gonna need a bunch of shipments to do that. But it could be doable. We have lots of surplus saved up over the years. This department of surplus was a great fucking idea, Ekro said. His expression was still frozen in awe. No more deficits, no more budget cuts. Then his lips drew up into a smile. We might just about save the damn foundation. No questions about that, Rune said, putting down the calculator. Mr. Secretary, a security staff member said. Entering their part of the seats, she had an apologetic look on her face, with just the slightest hint of irritation. Sorry to say this, but keep it down. My team's trying to fucking sleep. Ekro guiltily withdrew his lips in an expression of apology, looking down and away from the staff member. I'm sorry, but I... We apologize, Fern said, looking at the staff member. Her tone was stern and commanding. But please... Do remember that you're talking to the head of a foundation department. The staff member narrowed her eyes, then sighed, and gritted her teeth. Fine. I'm sorry for speaking to you that way, Mr. Secretary. Good, Fern said, crossing her arms. Now you can return to... Ekro interrupted and moved to block her face with his arm. I'm sorry about her behavior. You may now continue on. The staff member crinkled her eyebrows and crossed her arms. She shook her head slightly. Yeah, she turned to leave. All right. Her retreating footsteps were loud as she moved down the corridor. A moment passed. What the heck was that? Fern said, looking at Ekro. I was trying to assume your position for you. Ekro went back to his seat, sighing. She had a point, Sierra. You should have just apologized. Fern scoffed grinning in incredulity to herself. Have some more self freaking respect, New. Do you forget your position? Ekro shook his head, looking at her all the while. I'm not sworn in yet. I don't have any position. Who am I? Fucking asshat or... or Banner the fucking terror? Banner was the assistant to the site director back at O2, and was a terrifying figure that whipped all the departments in the site into shape. He was also a legendary dick. Ekro felt a chill go up his spine just as he said the name. No, she said. But you need to grow a damn spine. You deal just save the foundation. If you got it, use it. I'm not one to flaunt, damn it, Ekro responded, gritting his teeth. I got a silver tongue and a mind for numbers. Doesn't mean that... And you saved the damn foundation, Fern interrupted. Did I have to repeat that? Ekro shook his head again. 
I don't want to abuse my power, Sierra. Other people might, back in Saito too, but... Fern sighed with a disbelieving grin. She raised her hands in a show of concession. Fine, no, you win, game over. Her voice lowered her mutter. People are bound to step over you in the future with that kind of freaky attitude. Ekro nodded his eyebrows, but didn't respond. Attention, all passengers, the pilot said from the intercom. This is your pilot speaking. We're about to land to the Site 02 airstrip in ETA 2 minutes. Please begin packing your belongings. Showtime, Fern said mutely, putting all the papers on the table in neat and orderly piles in the briefcase. Time to show them what you're made of, Mr. Secretary. It's time to order the new department. Ekro sighed. Sierra... Fern looked back at him. Don't worry about it, all right? Pack up your stuff. They're probably in reorganization to hell right now, and we gotta step in. Ekro began placing his papers into a briefcase as well, along with his pen and calculator. He sighed again. You think I can cut it? Fern looked up at him, her light brown eyes staring into his. She showed him a half-smile. We just went to Spain and cut out a gigantic deal. I think you already know my answer to that question. Yes, Ekro said, doubtfully. Have some freaking respect for yourself, Fern answered. Yes. No, Ekro said, shaking his head. Oh, dear God, no. We spent nearly two days away. Sierra said, tucking her hair behind her ear. Of course everything's nice and ordered. In front of them, maintenance workers were still walking to and fro with furniture and boxes of things, chattering to each other as they ordered this desk and that, setting up computers on them as they finished laying down furniture. Most of the cubicles were already being erected, but with a hundred employees being planned to become part of the Department of Surplus, it was at that moment that Ekro became aware of the true scale of what he was now leading. A scale that he would have to address. Add that to my list of problems? Ekro sighed. The only thing that's ordered here are the damn cubicles and the computers. Fern chuckled. At least site direction already had the location organized. Total number right now is a hundred and ten employees, 20 from the Amnestics Production Committee, 45 from my Statistics Subdivision, and 42 from the Department of Marketeering. She looked up in thought, then continued. Also, three from Accounting's IT. Ekro looked at her with his mouth agape. Th that many? Only astonishment showed itself on his face. Holy fucking shit. We're on the small side as well, too, Fern said. But... I'm certain we'll grow with time, considering your our importance. She looked at him. You feel like a secretary yet? She said grudgingly. Ekro looked at her. Fern. Fern held a thick stack of papers in her left hand, along with a large briefcase held by her right. She shoved the papers towards Ekro's chest. That's the personnel files of every prospective employee. Select your people at your pleasure. The terror up at site direction sends his compliments. Ekro was simply overwhelmed. He raffled through the papers. We have this many? We'll go over them later, Fern said, moving down the main aisle of cubicles. Ekro followed. He kept reading through the papers as he did. Sierra, I don't think that I... You'll get a handle on it eventually, Nu, Fern said as she continued down the aisle. The managerial advisor should be coming down from site direction any time now. She said the words with dread, though Ekro didn't notice. He'll get you up to speed with your management skills, give you a crash course. Ekro sighed. This feels a bit fast, isn't it? I'm not exactly a managerial guy. The Foundation chose us, and it's not as if you did a bad job so far. Fern answered. The cubicles that they were passing through went on and on. She looked to her right, then continued in that direction. Ekro's eyes were directed down at the paper in his hands, and the papers alone. Yeah, but this is leadership, Sierra. I'm not cut out for that. Fern put out a hand, stopping Ekro in his trance. New, no, look up. 
Ekru didn't bother, busy as he was with reviewing his options. It's just... no, Sierra urged. Look the crap up! Ekru gave out a sigh of frustration. Why should I... Then he immediately stopped. Oh. In front of them was a large rectangular office nearly the size of a full conference room. A desk with a desktop computer dominated the front, flanked by a few paintings on the walls surrounding it. Behind the desk was a large and comfortable seat, a far cry from the office chair that Ekro was used to as an undersecretary. In the front of the desk were wooden chairs, as well, tailor-made to receive visitors. What the... Ekro was astonished. What the hell is this? Your new office new? Fern answered, a wild smile on her face. Your new beautiful office, Secretary of Surplus, seems to be so much better now, isn't it? Ekro nodded, his mouth agape. Oh. He nodded faster. Oh, yeah. Go in, come on, Fern said, ushering him with her arm. It won't crumble the moment you walk in. Fuck you, Ekro joked. His eyes were wide with awe as he took a step forward. Is this... Is this where I'm going to be now? Heck yeah, silly, Fern answered, watching him. This is your new home. You deserve it. Ekro didn't hear. He took a step forward, then another step, then another. After the third step, he was inside. The room was large, nearly cavernous by his previous standards. Windows with blinds let the morning light into the room, casting everything in a beautiful glow. Yes, Ekro said, finally smiling. Like a child in a candy store, the 35-year-old rushed to the desk in a sprint, sitting on the comfortable chair as he savored the first taste of his new lodgings. Setting down the papers and briefcase in his hands, he touched the desk with a hallowed reverence, holding his breath with astonishment as he felt the polished wood. For Pete's sake, Fern said, setting down a briefcase as well and crossing her arms. Do you really like it that much? Ekro gave her a wide smile, nodding multiple times in quick succession. Fuck yes. Fern chuckled. Perk of the job. She took a step closer, placing her hands on the desk as she looked down at him. Do you feel like you're a proper department head now? Ready to think like one? Ekro kept smiling, not giving an answer for a few moments. Then he looked up at her. It's nice, he said simply. It isn't, a voice said outside. They heard heavy footsteps outside, and they looked in that direction. A large man in a suit walked in, his blonde and greasy hair combed off to the side. He walked in, coming to a stop just a few meters away from Ekro's desk. He clapped his hands once. Because it's about time we get to business. Oh shit, Ekro muttered. He knew exactly who he was. The Terror of Site 02. Are you the... I haven't properly introduced you yet, Fern said, underestimating the gravity of the current situation as she cleared her throat and stepped back, gesturing to the heavy man with a hand. This is Arnold Banner, the secretary to the site director. He's the managerial advisor I talked to you about. She looked at Banner, then gestured to Ekro. Mr. Banner, this is Secretary Ekro of the new Department of Surplus. Pleased to meet you, Banner said listlessly, walking past Fern and stretching out a hand. His reputation preceded him. He was a big man and intimidating. Ekro, terrified out of his mind, gave a small bow, standing up to shake Banner's hand. He was trembling again. He didn't like the feeling. Uh, pleased to meet you, he said politely. I look forward to learning from you. Banner gave a heavy roar of a laugh. So, the new secretary pup wants to learn the ropes, eh? Behind him, Fern turned her head. Please don't. Eh? Banner said, interrupting her. He looked back at Ekro, separating his hand from his, and bringing it down on the stack of personnel papers. Have you looked through these yet? His voice was loud and bellowing. Ekro feigned a smile, 
knees continuing to shake. He looked at Fern, who looked as if she might stare a hole in the back of Banner's head. Then he looked back at Banner. I have some, but not to... Well, get to it, Pipsqueak, Banner said, sliding it to him. Oh, fives want the new department to be up and running by the end of the week, and we have a lot to cover. He put a hand on his chin, looking down on him. He seemed to think Ekro as a plaything. Honestly, you should have known all of this before you got here, right? I only just came here after the flight to Spain, Ekro said incredulously. But... No buts, Pipsqueak. This ain't sales, and this ain't the Department of Accounting, Banner said, smiling at him with a hint of irritation and a healthy dose of condensation. Let's get to business. The hell? Ekro thought. But wait, aren't we... Banner laughed in his face, disregarding him with a gesture. It looked like his short patience was wearing thin. Let's get to fucking business. I... Get your training wheels on. Fern tried to speak up. All right, but please, if you would... Then Banner turned with a fury. He said through gritted teeth, For fuck's sake, woman! Stop fucking interrupting me! He stared daggers at her. I'm doing this as a favor to Director DeVere, so let me do my fucking job! Hey, Ecker said, putting out both his hands in a gesture of reconciliation. We don't need to... Fern continued, she didn't seem to hear him. He's still a secretary, though, sir, so if you will... Arf! Banner said, disregarding her again. I won't tolerate this fucking shit! Please, Fern said. Should I intervene? He thought, but... I will address him as I damn please! Banner said again, turning on her and squaring his shoulders. Now let me do my damn job! Fern shrunk at once. Fern. At that moment, Echo remembered what Fern had told him on the plane. People are bound to step over you in the future, with that kind of freaking attitude. Seeing it now, she was right. He needed to stand up for himself. Kindly shut it, Banner, he shouted. That didn't count as abuse of power, right? Banner stopped in his tracks. He turned to Ekro. You! Banner was nearly frothing at the mouth. He was on the edge of a rampage. Did you just... I did, Ekro said, gritting his teeth. And I will not tolerate this gross disrespect in my department. Banner looked at him, staring daggers into his eyes. Ekro looked up at him all the same, holding his ground. If you shout at my staff again, you can show yourself out. Then Banner crossed his arms, then smiled. So, he does know how to bark fine, Mr. Secretary, he said with a grudging respect. I'll act properly. Thank you, Ekro said, sitting down. He gestured to the seats. Please, sit down. Banner followed his instructions, crossing his legs. All right, then. Where do you want to start? He spoke slowly and menacingly. Ekra looked at him. From the beginning, please. The next few days were close to hell on Earth. Incentives, tactical plans, analysis, personnel selection, strategic plans, words, not much numbers. Having sent down at Site-02 on Wednesday, the deadline for all the things they needed to cover was on Saturday, which left them with three short days to write up what they needed. To his credit, Arnold Banner was a fantastic advisor. Even Ekro could admit that, looking past their first meeting. Thanks to him, they covered every nook and cranny every pertinent concept they needed to learn. Together, they appointed more undersecretaries, created subdivisions, selected personnel, with Fern's input being extremely valuable with statistics, wrote down proposals, and did everything imaginable to get the department running, at the expense of sleep. When Saturday came and their plans were approved by the site director, they brought in nearly all the new employees from all the other departments, having coordinated with their department heads beforehand in order to facilitate a smooth transition. Which leads up to this moment. You ready, Mr. Secretary? Fern said, her hands in her pockets. They're all waiting for you. Ekro gave a confident smile, though his knees were shaking again. Ready as I'll ever, Danby. Good, Fern said, placing her hand on the door. Let's get ready. Chin up. 
With a silent whoosh, she pushed the door open, and Ekro stepped through and out into the corridor, looking out at all the various employees of his new department, each of them looking weary and stressed, and, in their own way, they were. Site 19 had burdened all of the departments equally. Looking at all of them like this, the sheer number of a hundred people was almost enough to get Ekro's knees to buckle, but he knew that it wouldn't give a good first impression. Dear God, he thought, they're endless. He cleared his throat. Department of Surplus, he shouted with the same volume that he did with Banner. At once, all the employees turned their eyes on him. This is new, Friend said, crossing her arms. I think they heard about Banner. Oh shit, he thought. His teeth were chattering. Oh shit. He put both his hands out. It's an honor to see you all here, but let's keep it short. He heightened his voice, causing it to echo across the room. The Foundation needs us, so let's not keep it waiting. From all of you up to me, let's get to work. A silence followed. A moment passed. Then the employees, his employees, eyes perked up. Yes, Mr. Secretary, they barked back. He smiled. Our first initiative, he paused. Get this department off the ground! All right, and for now, that is the end of the Foundation's broke storyline. Hopefully, when he finishes the next one, Ekranak will remember to remind me, and if not, perhaps one of you will stumble upon it, or I will at some point, and I can read that one. But until then, thank you very much for coming. It's been a hell of a time reading for you all, and I truly do enjoy it. Good luck out there, and go find someone to give a compliment to.